On this episode, I'm going to cover a topic that is sometimes mistakenly included in the term dehydration in natural gas. This topic will cover the actual function of the ethylene glycol injection system when used in conjunction with the shortcut liquids recovery, mainly revolving around propane refrigeration. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Experts Network. another episode on the Experts Network. Hi, my name is Drew Gibson and I'm a process specialist here at Dehydration Experts. It's a common misconception that the EG or ethylene glycol that is injected in the propane refrigeration system dehydrates the feed gas like triethylene glycol or TEG does in a conventional dehydrator. Now, even though the TEG and EG are both glycols, they have characteristic properties that are different from each other. And each glycol has a specific role in gas processing where these properties are best suited. So let's take a look at each system first so we can understand the differences. Here we have a conventional TG dehydrator system. What stands out here as a major difference from the EG refuge system is a primary piece of equipment, the contactor. And this is where the dehydration of the wet feed gas happens. First, the gas should always go through an inlet separator where free water, solids, liquid hydrocarbons can be removed. From there, the wet feed gas enters the contactor bottoms where it travels up the column on its path to being dehydrated. While the gas passes up through either trays or structured packing, it comes into contact with lean TG that is injected into the top part of the contactor. It then flows across the trays or downward through packing. This is what's referred to as countercurrent flow, which is essential for achieving the lowest possible water content of the treated gas going out of the top of the contactor. Now, what is water is removed from the gas because the glycol is hydroscopic, meaning it can absorb water vapor out of the gas stream. What we're hoping to achieve by the time the gas exits the top of the contactor is an equilibrium between the amount of water in the lean TEG entering the top of the contactor and the gas exiting the top of the contactor. So the lower the water content of the lean TEG injected into the top of the contactor, the lower the water content of the gas leaving the top of the contactor. The water vapor removed from the gas is present in the rich TEG, leaving the bottom of the contactor. The water is removed from the rich TEG by boiling it out of solution in the regenerator and reboiler. Once the water is boiled off at a temperature around 200 degrees Celsius, the resultant lean TEG is then cooled and filtered and sent back to the contactor to complete its cyclic process. So let's highlight some properties of the TEG that make it ideal for dehydration applications. First, it has a lower affinity for water, which means it can be regenerated at the lowest residual water content, resulting in the lowest treated gas water specification. It also has a low volatility at the absorption temperature, which helps reduce vaporization losses. It, is, it also has good thermal stability to prevent decomposition during the regeneration at those high temperatures. So getting to the main job of the Lean TEG is to absorb as much water vapor in the gas stream as possible. What determines how much water needs to be removed from the gas streams is set by such factors as field pipeline conditions, avoiding hydrates, uh, main sales specifications, downstream processes um, like liquids recovery. Now, there are other factors that play a role as to how much water can be picked up by the TEG, but that'll have to be covered in another episode. Now, for the ethylene glycol refrigeration system, we can see the primary equipment is a series of exchangers, a gas to gas, gas to liquid and chiller, versus a contactor tower in the dehydration unit. So, just like the TEG dehydration process, an inlet separator is imperative to remove as many contaminants and free liquid as possible before the feed gas is further processed. After the inlet separator, the feed gas then travels through the tube side of the exchangers, which is the gas to gas, the gas to liquid, chiller, and then through the LTS. So the goal of the exchangers is to incrementally reduce the gas temperature from feed gas temperature, which is typically 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, to a, temp to a chiller temperature of generally minus 25 to minus 35 degrees Celsius. As the gas cools, the hydrocarbons are condensed and the recovered and recovered in the low temperature separator, resulting in not only liquids recovery, 
but the gas that exits into the low temperature separator now meets a hydrocarbon dew point specification consistent with the chiller temperature. The cold gas and natural gas liquids, or NGLs, from the separator are used for chilling in the gas to gas and gas to liquid exchangers. These exchangers cool down the feed gas, but also warm up the treated gas to pipeline conditions. Finally, chilling of the gas is accomplished by exchanging it with a propane stream from the refrigeration system, which reduces the temperature to the coldest point in the system. At the same time, hydrocarbons condense from the gas stream, water is also condensing from the gas stream. Because of the cold temperatures within the process, the water, the water would normally freeze or hydrate off as a solid, which would eventually plug up the process. In order to prevent the condensed water from freezing, ethylene glycol is added to the process to act as an antifreeze. So just like the glycol based engine coolant in your car that prevents freeze ups in the winter. It is possible to calculate the water content of the gas stream at any temperature. So as the gas is chilled, the amount of water that condenses up the, out of the gas streams in every pass of the exchangers is known. Now, all that is required to prevent the water from freezing is to inject sufficient glycol to form a glycol water mixture that does not freeze at plant conditions. So, the lean glycol is usually injected into the process at about 80 weight percent strength in order to achieve a rich glycol strength between 60 and 70 weight percent in the LTS. These are target strengths because they fall directly within the no freeze zone of the ethylene glycol or EG freeze point chart seen here. Here water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius while the EG or pure EG freezes at minus 12 degrees Celsius, both higher than the coldest temperature seen in the process. But a blend of EG and water has lower freezing points. By maintaining the glycol concentration in the process between the 60 and 80 weight percent, the system should not freeze off. Now, the lean EG injection points are circled here at the various <coughs> exchangers. Any condensed hydrocarbons and water along with the injected glycol are accumulated in a three-phase separator, which we refer to as the low temperature separator or LTS. Because of the density of the rich EG water mixture is greater than the recovered liquid hydrocarbon density, the hydrocarbon phase will actually float on top of the glycol water phase, which drops out to the bottom of the separator. The rich EG water accumulates in a boot at the bottom of the separator where a heating coil is situated which aids in the separation between the rich EG and the recovered liquid hydrocarbons. The coil also cools the lean EG before being injected into the various exchangers. The glycol water blend is then taken from the boot and sent to the regeneration side of the process, which is almost exactly the same as the regeneration loop in the TEG dehydration unit. A couple of key differences though, being the amount of water left in the lean glycol solution is usually about 80 weight percent and the operating temperature of the reboiler is around 120 degrees Celsius. So, even though the EG has excellent hydroscopic properties, we're not counting on the glycol to absorb any water vapor from the chilled gas streams. In this type of process, we are using the EG as a hydrate inhibitor to create an antifreeze in order to ensure the condensed water can flow through the various exchangers into the LTS or low temperature separator without freezing. The use of ethylene glycol in this scenario is fairly similar to the pipeline hydrate control application. We are capturing the free water being condensed out of the wet gas stream and keeping it in an aqueous solution throughout the cooling process. Now let's highlight some properties of the EG that make it attractive for the propane refrigeration process. First, it has the lowest hydrocarbon solubility of the glycols, so separation phases in the LTS are more easily achieved. Also, it has a freeze point curve that has a no freeze zone to target for your lean and rich glycol strengths. And lastly, its viscosity remains low enough, it can be injected through a nozzle to produce a fine mist that can travel freely into the various tube sheets in the exchangers. So let's recap on the systems. Both a conventional TG dehydrator and an EG refrigeration system can be used to meet water dew point. Each process uses a specific glycol for a reason. 
TG to absorb water vapor directly from the gas stream via contact either in a trade or packed tower, and EG forms an antifreeze blend by dissolving into the condensed water formed when chilling the feed gas in the refrigeration process. Stay tuned for future episodes where we'll discuss optimizing injection rates at the various exchanges and how to choose the correct nozzles for that application. Thank you for watching this episode on the Experts Network and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for updated videos by clicking that bell.